And God was going to show him as he began to pick up his feet and go. God would show him where and how and what. And, you know, we don't like that kind of, that level of uncertainty. But that is a measure of our unbelief to the extent that that's true. But Abraham was the model of faith in that he believed God. When God promised him something, he believed it. When God told him to do something, he did it. Right down to the point where he was actually instructed on, one, on the one occasion to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. And his confidence in God was so complete, so great that he was willing to do it. In his own mind, he had it figured out, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill him, but God's going to raise him from the dead. How many times have you figured out something and you, fig you thought you knew how it was going to go? And God's sitting up there chuckling. We have a God who's a whole lot bigger and smarter than we are. And it rarely works out the way we think. You know, we are, what, a, what a wise place it is just to come to a place of rest and confidence in him where we know he loves us. We know we can trust him. We know he can take us through. And so, of course, Abraham, you know, was, was all set to plunge the knife. And God stopped him and said, I see that you're not going to withhold anything from me. And, and just there was a renewal of the covenant. And what a testimony it has been to believers ever since. The faithfulness of God. And uh, the, the level of trust. What real faith is. People call all kinds of things faith. But I mean faith is when you don't know. Faith is when you can't see. But you know that God does. And God sees. And God cares. And he can be trusted. And he is to be trusted. Not just in some vague theological sense, but in, in the real issues of life that you and I face this day. You know, like the song was sung, my life is in his hands. That's the only safe place I know. Boy, if it's in my hands, I'm going to make a mess of it. And so will you. But anyway, you know how the, uh, the uh, Levites were instructed to go into the Jordan River and God was going to do something to... To really show who was in charge, not just a testimony to his people, but a testimony to all the nations around about. And, uh, of course, he picked the worst possible time from the natural standpoint, didn't he? I mean, the, uh, this was harvest time. You know, I even see the mercy of God in that because it wasn't but a few days. They went across the Jordan and the manna stopped. But what season was it? Harvest. They began to eat the fruit of the land that day. The, the manna stopped. So I tell you, God has things under control. He knows, he knows all about the needs of his people. He was in, even concerned about what they were going to eat all the way. But anyway, the instruction was to go and put your foot in the Jordan. And the moment they did, all of a sudden, way upstream, the water stood in a heap. And it says they went in a dry ground. Now, I don't know how literally to take that. I know it was, it was solid anyway. Whatever it was, they could walk across it. That's, that's amazing to me that it was dry. I, I can see muddy, but, but dry? I mean, we serve a great God, don't we? But they walked out into the middle, and they stood there, and that entire nation, plus the thousands of, of warriors from these other tribes that were still going to stay on the east, they all marched through, and when they got done, they, uh, he instructed them, go, go grab some stones, one from each tribe. And bring them out as a testimony to what God has done here this day. And the moment they stepped out, the water came together. And I'll tell you, what do you think the people on that side of the, uh, of the river thought when they, when they were heard about that? Can you imagine? <laughs> How would you like to be one of those nations? You've already heard what happened in Egypt. You heard what happened to, the, to these great kings on the east side of Jordan River. Now all of a sudden, they're, you know they're coming to get you. And they walk through a river and, and, and their God stops the water so they can walk through on dry ground. We're toast, basically, is what they'd be saying. And it says, uh, in fact, it says at the end of chapter 4, he did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. So God, God knows how and why to do the things that he does. Praise God. So anyway, there was another piece of business to take care of, and that was the fact that they had not really walked in the covenant very well during these years in the wilderness, and there was a whole generation 
that had never really practiced the rite of circumcision of their children. And, uh, and so they, uh, they, they had to stop and take care of that. And I, I see that as something that I sense the Lord is trying to do in our own midst. Because the promises and the purposes of God have to do with a covenant people. You know, we don't, work, we don't walk in the old covenant. That was temporary. That was something God instituted for a time. We walk in the eternal covenant. But I'll tell you, this is not something for church and churchy people and, you know, religion. This is what God is doing in the earth always has to do with a covenant people. They know that they have been called out of a world of darkness. They know that they stand in right relationship to God because of the cross and the blood that was shed there. They have, bowed, they have not only put their faith in what he did, but they have owned him as Lord, not just in name, but in practice. And there is a covenant that draws them together with others of like spirit. And so that they become, in that sense, a unique people in the earth. There's the people of the world. There's God's covenant people. Do you sense that in what God is doing in lives here? I'll tell you, I pray that you're part of that. I pray that God will so make his covenant and his purposes real that you won't just see this as church. Something to do on Sunday and whenever and whatever else. Just part of your life. But God has called us as surely as he called Abraham to a pilgrim life in this world. And I'll tell you, it, it, gets, it gets a whole lot better as we go along here. But anyway, there is a renewal of the covenant and, of course, they, they wait until there's some healing that, went along, that took place. But then it says uh, in verse uh, 10 of chapter 5, it says, on the, four, on the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. Now, again, this was very central to their worship. I mean, this, was, this marked the memorial of what God had done for them in Egypt. And you remember what happened there, that, uh, that God judged the Egyptians until finally there came the great judgment on the firstborn of all Egypt. But God gave them a covenant. You put the blood of a lamb on the doorpost and the lintel of your door, and I'll tell you, the death angel who comes through won't touch your house. I don't know how many people are aware of what's going on in this world and where it's headed. There is a judgment that is surely coming to this world. I mean, if God's word is true, this world is ripe for judgment. I am not a prophet. I have, I'm not talking about anything date setting and all that kind of stuff. But this world is ripe for judgment, regardless of whether it's this afternoon or a thousand years from now. And I think it's nearer to this afternoon than a thousand years, personally. But anyway, I'll tell you, we need to be in that covenant. We need to be those who have put our trust in the blood of the Lamb of God, not just the, the lambs that they used. That was just a type of what was to come. But oh, there's a safe place. There is a place that God will respect. You know, you see it again in, in Rahab and the, and the scarlet. What color was the, was the cord? It was scarlet, wasn't it? You can, you can see the typology that God was, was establishing there. That was the mark of, of blood as far as she was concerned and her faith in the God of Israel. And God protected her. And I'll tell you, there is a place in spite of all the, the fear and the uncertainty that marks this world, there is a place of utter peace and safety in him. 